Lately, I've been getting back into playing some of my older handhelds. I recently picked up my Game Boy Color and my copy of Pokemon Blue, and after 50 hours of battling trainers and the sunlight, because this doesn't have a backlit screen, I sort of gained a new appreciation for its full color display and its extremely long battery life. But a lot of players don't want to play on a tiny screen like this or shell out the two or three hundred dollars it would cost to get a GameCube with a Game Boy Player. Because yeah, that's, it's insane to think about, but that's about how much they run these days on the secondhand market. Sure, you can play games on the Super Game Boy through the Super Nintendo, but it, it doesn't actually use the full real estate of the screen. So it's not really ideal either. And neither of these options can really display in true HD either without the use of crazy mods. But there is another option to consider. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Hyperkin Retron SQ, or Retron Square, I'm, I'm not too sure, I probably should have asked. This is a cute and compact little console that'll play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games and Game Boy Advance games, kind of on your big screen. I've spent about 10 or 15 hours with this thing so far, and it's pretty cool. It does have some flaws, but I think they could be minor or major depending on your preferences. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this thing. One of the best parts of the Retron SQ is just how easy it is to actually use. For the most part, you just plug it into your TV, give it some juice, pop in a game and a controller, and you're good to go. The SQ is also about the size of three Game Boy Advance systems put together. That was the closest Nintendo reference that I could come up with, and I don't have three, I just have one. But its small size makes it compact enough for travel, and it also means that it won't really take up much real estate on your TV stand either. The SQ also comes with an HDMI cable to plug it into your TV, a USB-C cable for power, a 512 megabyte micro SD card, and a Hyperkin Scout wired controller, which mimics the SNES design. I'm a pretty big stickler when it comes to third-party controllers, but I honestly really like the feeling of this controller quite a bit. The L and R buttons feel a little spongy, maybe is the correct term to use, but the D-pad feels really solid. I almost prefer it to the Super Nintendo D-pad, and that's, that's, a, that's saying a lot. It's a little sharper than the SNES's, but that could just be that this is pretty new. It just feels, it feels tight and responsive. I, I dig it. For a third party effort, this comes really close to the original, and it's a great way to play Game Boy games. Now the big question you're probably wondering is, how does Boktai play on this thing? It doesn't detect the solar panel. How do games actually play on the Retron SQ? To my knowledge, the SQ uses Hyperkin's own in-house software to rip any game cartridge you pop into the SQ onto its micro SD card that's stored in the backside of the system. When you go to play a game for the first time, the SQ will take a bit of time to dump a game, but anytime you actually go to play the game from that point on, the load times will be significantly shorter. Loading times are extremely varied and sometimes feel like they can last almost a minute long, which for the Game Boy, that's kind of unexpected. Your save file will also get dumped in the process too, which I have mixed feelings on, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. You'll also still need to plug a game in to actually play it even after the ROM gets dumped. So don't expect to borrow a bunch of games from friends and dump them out of the system or treat this as an emulation machine. You use it to play your original games. Games play at 720p and at their native aspect ratio as well. There is a little switch on the back that will stretch the image to fill the screen if you're the kind of person that prefers that as well though. Game Boy and Game Boy Color games look pretty good. No frame dips, strange colors, or random sounds popping in. Everything is as you'd hope. And original Game Boy games will use the same color palette that you'd get if you plug them into a Game Boy Color. And Game Boy Color games look just as sharp as they should. Pixels are nice and crispy and colors pop. Some games can look a bit messy as they weren't designed to be played on the 50 inch TV in your living room, but if you just sit a ways back like your mom always told you to, you should be just fine. Now, Game Boy Advance compatibility, on the other hand, is still a work in progress. We've been playing with the Retron SQ now for a few weeks, so we've we've seen it all. In the beginning, frame rate was pretty rough, but Hyperkin has been working on a patch to smooth it out, and we happen to have gotten our hands on an early build of this patch, and for the most part, it seems fixed. We captured gameplay of both Metroid Zero Mission and Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance back before the patch was sent to us, and frame rate was really rough but now it's looking as smooth as you'd hope. 
Now on the other hand, when playing Game Boy Advance games, we did notice that there were some rather harsh sound effects that would pop in and out from time to time. But we've talked with Hyperkin about it and they are investigating it to see what they can fix with the next update. So if you're expecting to play Game Boy Advance games on this, just know that it seems like that feature still needs a bit more time in the oven, but it's cool to see that Hyperkin is working to update it. The SQ is also so focused on being an easy to use plug and play system that it doesn't feature any sort of menu. So unfortunately at this time, that means that there isn't really any way of changing color palettes, making save states, or adding in filters like scan lines, which are features I'd personally love to see added down the road. And it's worth bringing up as well that it seems like Hyperkin is really dedicated to ironing out any of the problems that the community has addressed so far. And another thing I want to bring up is the way that the SQ handles the save files that are on your cartridge. So whenever you pop a game into the SQ for the first time, the SQ will copy all of the save data that's on the game over to its micro SD card. Then whenever you save when you're playing on the SQ, it will only overwrite the data that's on the micro SD card, not on your cartridge. And the issue with this is that if you happen to then take your copy of Pokemon Blue, you know, you go fight the Elite Four, you go catch some cool Pokemon while you're playing the Retron SQ, and then you pop the game back in your Game Boy to go play, you won't have the progress that you made on the Retron SQ, because that is all locked to the system. Your save file on your cartridge will be just as it was when you first put it into the Retron SQ. And in my opinion, that's a good and a bad thing. I chatted with Hyperkin about this, and their reasoning for this choice is to make sure that your original save data doesn't accidentally somehow become corrupted during the writing process. They said that they never had any issues with this on their end, but they wanted to protect your potential childhood save files at all cost. Now I appreciate that thought greatly, but the ease of being able to jump back and forth between handheld and console play is amazing. We already know that with the Switch. Being able to take your console games on the go with you and have your same save file is extremely important, and it's caused me, and I imagine many of you as well, to play certain games or just even finish them. I'm hoping Hyperkin eventually finds a way to implement an option for for players to write save files back over to their cartridges if they want. And I understand why they wouldn't want to implement that. You know, like if I lost my 50 hour save file of Pokemon Blue, I'd be pretty upset. But if they gave us a way to somehow back up our save files from the Retron SQ and then write them back over onto the game, I would feel a lot better about it if somehow my save file got lost from the cartridge. I hope they take some more time to figure something like that out because that that's sort of a deal breaker for me. And as I mentioned before as well, Hyperkin has taken a lot of time to fix up some of the flaws with the system. When the system first launched, things were a bit more rocky as the aspect ratio wasn't perfect, visuals were pretty blurry, and the frame rate of Game Boy Advance games was pretty rough, but Hyperkin has already released a new firmware update you can download as well. Now installing the updates can be a bit tricky as it does require the use of a PC and it will overwrite any save files that you already have on your micro SD card, but once it's done, you should be good. Hyperkin has made a valiant effort towards creating an affordable and easy to use plug and play console to play your classic Game Boy line of games on the big screen. If you're okay with the few things it lacks like save states and color options, this is a solid way to play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and eventually Game Boy Advance games on the big screen. The Retron SQ from Hyperkin retails for $74.99 here in the US, and we'll leave some links in the description down below if you want to go pick one of these up for yourself. They do come in two different color types right now, this sort of like 80s Grand Theft Auto Vice City color scheme, at least that's what it reminds me of, and then there's also a black and gold version I believe as well, and that one's also features this kind of like translucent plastic, which I love, it's very reminiscent of that era. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below if the Retron SQ is something you'd be interested and picking up or let us know if there's anything that you wish they'd do differently with it based on everything you've heard in our review or let us know if you already have one and what you think of it so far. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, why don't you go ahead and take that subscribe button and blow it up on the big screen for everyone to see, everyone in the room, even though it's only a single player subscribe button and only one person can play it because that's that's how it, it works. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you next time.